This is the third in a series of six tutorials where we discuss the six basic principles of spiritual practice. Please do refer to our earlier tutorial, An Introduction to the Basic Principles, to understand the importance of these principles. The third basic principle states that in our spiritual practice, we have to go from the gross to the subtle. And this is both in terms of our efforts in spiritual practice and the aspect of God worshipped. Gross would have connotations of shallow, superficial, superfluous, mechanical and limited in terms of both the understanding of the God principle as well as the quality and quantity of our spiritual practice efforts. From the perspective of the aspect of God that is worshipped, if we were to look at gross and subtle as two ends of a continuum, then at the beginning of the continuum, gross would mean something that is very tangible or very physical. And at the other end of the continuum is the unmanifest supreme God principle, which is the most subtle or intangible. So if we have to merge into the supreme God principle, which is the ultimate in spiritual evolution, then our spiritual practice too has to become more and more subtle. This means that we have to improve upon our spiritual practice by going from just physical actions to a practice at a more subtle level which is internalized. A real test for spiritual practice to be more subtle is that it needs to ensure the dissolution of the five senses, mind and intellect. This is because if we have to evolve spiritually, we have to transcend identifying ourselves with our gross body and our little mind and intellect and finally identify and merge with the soul within us and this is actually our true nature that is the God within us. To understand the spirit of this basic principle of spiritual practice let's look at a couple of analogies. In this example we see two people shaking hands which is an outward sign of goodwill and agreement but the physical display of goodwill is merely a facade. This is because at a subtle and intangible level, their thoughts about one another and their intentions do not reflect goodwill. Here's another example. We see a person going through the motions of praying, but his thoughts are far away from it. And here again we see that the gross or physical actions are not a reflection of the spiritual state of the person. From these two examples we see that the gross or outward signs are not necessarily a reflection of one's inner state. However, in spiritual practice, the inner state is most important and it is the driver behind sustained positive spiritual changes in us. So if we go back to the example of the man praying who is following the path of devotion, then here would be some of the steps in progressing from the gross to the subtle. In the beginning, at the grossest level, he would attend a prayer service at a place of worship, but his thoughts would be somewhere far away. At a more subtle level, he would say only formal prayers at predetermined times such as like meal times or at weekly religious services. And these are basically prayers that have been taught to us and we rattle them out by heart but without any feeling. At an even more subtle level, we say the same formal prayers, but with feeling. And then, at an even more subtle level, we say one's own heartfelt prayers. With regards to the spiritual practice of chanting the name of God, as per the religion of one's birth, it can be made more and more subtle just by improving the quality of one's chanting. In the initial stages, Chanting may be done aloud or with the help of beads. But at a later stage, it is the concentration on the name and chanting at a non-verbal level in one's mind which is more subtle. And this itself will facilitate faster spiritual growth. If one is trying to remove his personality defects as a spiritual practice, then at a gross level one may try and correct the wrong action such as being rude or sarcastic to people close to one. 
But as one matures as a seeker, at a more subtle level, one tries to correct the incorrect thought behind the wrong action. So here the incorrect thought that one could work on would be a superiority complex. Once there's a reduction in this thought, not only does rudeness or sarcasm get controlled, but also one's actions become more humble. So here again, by working on something at a more subtle level, that is one's thoughts, one positively influences many more actions. Please do reflect on whether your spiritual practice is progressively going from the gross to the subtle. And that's all for this presentation. Thank you for joining us.